You may recall that the Bill of Rights only restrained the federal government and only obligated federal, the federal government to act. So our negative and positive rights guaranteed by the Bill of Rights only applied to the federal government. This is because the First Amendment starts with the words, Congress shall make no law. So in the case of Barron versus Baltimore in 1833, the Supreme Court said that, well, this means that the whole of the Bill of Rights only applies to Congress, because those first five words say, Congress shall make no law. So it doesn't mean, say the state shall make no law, just says Congress. So the Fifth Amendment was at stake in Barron versus Baltimore. And the court said, no, no, the Fifth Amendment only constrains federal action. So in this case, Maryland didn't have an equivalent takings clause in their state constitution. So they were able to take Barron's uh, property, in this case, uh, part of the Port of Baltimore, without compensation. Now, the 14th Amendment changed this. In 1868, the 14th Amendment was ratified. The intention here was to protect former slaves. So freed slaves were now given rights of citizenship, and they made it very clear in the 14th Amendment that these rights could not be subject to state controls. You, If you were born or naturalized in the United States, you had these rights as a citizen. And this very broad and explicit language that said that states had to respect the rights of citizens meant that the Bill of Rights applied to states, not just to Congress anymore. That said, this actually took years for the court to recognize because it took a while for any cases to get to the court and for the court to then apply these amendments. Now, this is called a pro the process of incorporation. So as uh, cases have come to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has ruled on them, they've incorporated the amendments, meaning that they've applied these amendments to the states.